Mmm, yes, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday Night Live. Very excited. Glad you are here tuning in, just staring at that YouTube screen uh, tonight as we get into youth group. I love it. Uh, the days are getting longer, which is a huge treat, so it's still bright outside. I love that. It's getting warmer, so give yourself a, a silent clap. Uh, we're very excited about that. Um, but if you don't know, my name is Aaron, or Aaron as the kids on the block call me. They've switched it. Everyone used to call me Aaron, but it's coming back again to normal Aaron. So that's just the way cycles and trends happen. I don't know. Uh, we're very excited that you are here. Why are you here? Uh, great question. Why are we doing this? Well, we believe it is very important for you that you are in community with others and uh, growing in your community with God himself. So we're here uh, to play games, have fun, meet some people, and also to grow our relationship with Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, quick spoiler, we're gonna have a lesson today at the end about Joseph, you know, the guy with the Technicolor dream coat. Uh, we're gonna have a message about family tension and Joseph later in this program, so stay tuned for that. I wanted to start kind of differently with a, a little piece of media that I mm, consumed earlier this week that was sent to me. So I'm gonna throw up a, a TikTok here and bear with me, there's some uh, interesting dance moves, but it, it's funny. You'll, I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Here we go, let's try it. So you wanna live long, so you wanna be free. Baby, running out of town, that's a really bad beat. She wanna play hard to get this fun by me By me, but I never wait long I move on to what I need I get my way, get out my way Just a real treat. <laughs> um, some things are being made out there that just capture the imagination, I guess uh, you could say. <laughs> awesome. Well, we're going to move on. Some quick announcements for you. All right, high schoolers, coming up is the graduation ceremony, the grad celebration for the seniors this year. So there's actually gonna be a link in the bio for you guys to check it out. Again, high schoolers, if you have connection to these seniors, we saw some of them last week uh, running Student Night Live. Um, we're gonna have a ceremony honoring them um, and there's gonna be some delicious food that you can make along with that. So join us for, for that next, uh, when is that? That is June 7th. So link uh, is below in the description. Join us June 7th to honor our seniors. And seniors, we are so excited uh, to spend that night with you. Another announcement that's actually happening tomorrow. So if you're watching this live tomorrow, Thursday, we have a drive-in, uh, I don't know, celebration, a drive-through celebration at Browncroft Church. So if you're a family or someone who goes to Browncroft uh, and you drive through Browncroft, the, the main campus grounds, from three to five tomorrow, we're gonna have a welcoming and celebration committee waving you on as you drive through. So we would love to see you there. Some of our leaders are gonna be there, so you might get to see your leader cheering you on again tomorrow from three to five. Go ahead, rev up that engine, and drive through Browncroft, and we'll see you there. Okay, now if you remember two weeks ago, <laughs> back when I hosted, before Student Night Live, we did a meme the leader, but we never got to figure out who won that meme the leader. So without further ado, it's time for the section, meme the leader. Two weeks ago, we had this wonderful picture of Sydney, which I'm gonna throw up right now. I'm not gonna throw up, but I threw up the picture. Uh, anyways, I wanted to throw up some on, honorable mentions. So we had Haley B. She said, when my mom asked me if I remembered to read my Bible today, oh yeah, we've all 
we've all made that face during that question. Uh, Mark, Mark said this, when it's June and you're feeling cold. You know, Rochester weather hasn't been that great, but thankfully we've had an uptick, but that is exactly how you'd look. Billy McGee says, <laughs> Billy comes with these randomest comments. When you lost a competition and you don't win, and you don't get bragging rights, so you are sad. Billy, that is entirely too long for a meme. I don't know if you understand the meme concept, but again, I love it. <laughs> Putting it in honorable mention. Liz Myers says, when it's week eight of quarantine. Yeah, it's just been going on for a while. That's the appropriate uh, response. Uh, Killian, again, so close, no cigar yet, but Killian says, when you had an online class, but you made a blanket burrito. Uh, <laughs> I love it. Blanket burritos are high on my list of favorite burritos right behind some Taco Bell classics like the, uh, what is it? What's the one I really like? What's the Taco Bell burrito I really like? Ah, the Frito Burrito. I love the Frito Burrito. Moving on, Lincoln said, when you hear your footsteps and then you remember you live alone. Ah, uh, yeah, that's, I think I'd be a little more scared than that, but maybe Sydney is underneath a couch or a bed in this photo. That's true. And last but not least, the winner of Meme the Leader from two weeks ago is Matt Schilling says, I think I bought the wrong mask. <laughs> As someone who used a t-shirt as a bandana for four weeks, uh, yeah, I get this one. Um, great job, Matt. Fantastic job with Meme the Leader. Give yourself uh, three snaps, and that's it. Done. Well, we got to go to a new Meme the Leader. So get those fingers nimble and ready. Uh, get into the chat, because here we go. We are about to Meme the Leader. It is, boom, Josh Eisenhart. And what is happening here? Put it in the chat. Uh, it looks like there's some type of uh, relationship formed here with the Red Wings mascot. I, that sounded, anyways. Um, <laughs> what is happening here? Why is this happening? What is Josh thinking? Is, is the Red Wings mascot not a bird? Like, why? What is that? I. I don't know. When uh, when they give, they have buy one get one free corn dogs. When they, uh, when you're thinking of how you remembered Mother's Day this year. I don't know. Uh, put it in the chat. You got 10 seconds. You cut that down. We're at five seconds. Four, three, two, one. And all right, guys, you got it in the chat. I will review those and do it next week, give you some winners. Again, completely subjective. It's just my favorite one. So uh, I don't know if that helps you at all. It, it might be unfair, but well. All right, we also have some prize winners, some actual prize gift card winners from both two weeks ago and last week. So um, two weeks ago, we played a game called Behind the Mask. Josh took us through uh, some you know, Lady Gaga, is she puckering? I don't know. Does she is, Does she even have a mouth? Um, but we have a winner. We took the top answers from that one. So let's see who it is. Olivia Barrios, well done. Behind the mask expert. Uh, fantastic job. We will be sending something to you in the mail. Um, the... Last week, if you tuned in to Student Night Live, Daniel Wart took us through an amazing game called Left-Handed Picasso, and you guys had some interesting, uh, interesting answers. We compiled them all. Uh, whoever got the answers first, the correct answers first, threw them in to the prize generator. So here we go. If you were here last week, who is going to be the winner of Left-Handed Picasso? It is... Juliana W, which I'm almost positive is Juliana Wart, which makes me think that Daniel and her had some sort of secret. I, you know what? We're gonna give it to you, Juliana. Well done. Just a, um, <laughs> there was many other names in that, so it came out the way it came out. Good job. Fantastic work. Well, we're gonna transition. Whoop 
into the next game, um, and Josh Eisenhart is going to take it for us. Remember, you can win prizes, so be in that chat, be ready. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. Josh, do the honors. What is going on, Browncroft students? So great to be back with you this morning. Is it morning time? It's evening time. Why am I saying morning? That's crazy. That's just a full bag of crazy. Listen, good to see you guys tonight. Uh, been so long. Last week was so good. The, the students, uh, the Elevate high schoolers crushed the game. They were so good last week. Um, but I get to come back this week and I'm like, man, what could I do? Aaron's like, Aaron, he, he goes, Josh, we need you to come up with something big time. We need you to come up with something huge. And I said, Aaron, I don't know what to do. And he said, we'll do this. And then that made it a lot easier because he just told me what to do. So this game is something that we're going to call, get ready for this. You're not ready. You're not ready. I'm going to give you a moment to get ready. Are you ready? Okay. This game is called Reverse Musical Impressions. So he doesn't know it yet, but I'm gonna bring in someone else to this, and they are gonna help me with this game. Hey, um, Aaron, 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 you over there? A Aaron? Aaron, come back. Josh, I just threw it over to you. No. For the game, what am, I, am I on a Zoom call now? This is how I work now. I, I do it halfway and then I ask you to finish the rest of it. This is what we, we need you to do. I'm playing a game called Reverse Musical Impressions. I know, I'm watching. Unbelievable. It's gonna be so good. But did you know that I was gonna ask you to do this? There's I no did. way you. I did, I did not know, but now you guys are seeing my computer which sits out of frame. Uh, with my notes on it, so new, new, new angle. But uh, right. yeah, this is the deal. This is the deal. Um, I, I don't know if you were actually paying attention. Usually, I'm thinking when you throw it over to me to a game, you kind of just go and make a snack or something. But I, <laughs> yeah, busted. <laughs> So we're playing reverse musical impressions. I sent you a file, it's in the chat, of a couple songs that I want you to sing in certain kinds of voices. And what we're gonna do is this. We're gonna sing the song. Yes, you're gonna do it. He loves this idea. So we're gonna do it. We're gonna give everybody about 20 seconds or so to guess in the YouTube chat of what this name of the song is and who's the artist and it's gonna be incredible are you with me i'm with you great yeah <laughs> great i wasn't even gonna wait for you to answer i was just gonna be like no you're definitely in so here's how it goes we're gonna start off i'll do the first one and we'll start off with i don't know maybe maybe we'll do an easy one all right okay. something that i think i feel confident in my impersonation uh, abilities uh, this could be a voice that's a singer it could be uh, a famous cartoon whatever it's something that you should recommend okay ready all right first one here we go warming up my hands helps my vocal cords. that's, that's just an old trick of the trade. all right here we go okay <clears throat> hit me with those golden pipes here we go Me gonna take this horse to the old town road. Me gonna mmm cookie till I can't no more. Me gonna take this horse to the old town road. Me gonna run till I can't no more. All right, what is the oh name my gosh? What is the name of the song? Who is the artist that I'm impersonating? Artist slash could be anything. What is it? Check the chat. What is it, guys? Put your answers in right now. We're only gonna give you like five more seconds because I sang a long time. You did. And I, I feel like, yeah, the, those first answers coming in are gonna be real key. And I think I know what it is. Is that Cookie Monster singing Old Town Road? It is, you did it. So good. No, I, no, 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 no. I was very impressed by your impersonation. Josh, the ones you sent me, I can't say any of them are easy. <laughs> Yeah, I think the easy ones, I gave you all the hard ones. Because you're the actual performer. You you have that range that I just don't have. Okay. I, don't, I can do all sorts of muffins. This is not about range. Okay. Um, here we go. You got this next one. Everybody get ready. 
answers in the chat. Here we go. The quickest in the chat. Here it is. Ready? The itsy bitsy spider climbed up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Spider. Yeah. Oak out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And now the itsy bitsy spider. You climbed the spout again. Spider. <laughs> I, nice. that, I don't have any idea get your answers <laughs> that was a good one that was a really good one all right three two one the answer this is my guess and it's only a guess because i actually gave you this so i know that it's billy eilish singing the itsy bitsy spider wonderful yeah. job that's i w- all right here we go next one i'll take this one okay so don't don't fret over there um now this one's gonna go back in time just a little bit all right, right. this is gonna go to a, an age long before any of us were born but a very iconic voice if i can pull this off let's try it here we go i love you hey you love me we're a happy what family with a great big hug and a kiss from me to you won't you say you love me too all right babe (laughs) five seconds i don't know if that was any good it might not have been good in any way but you got five seconds name of the song name of the artist this is like like talk singing but like smooth talk singing yeah, I couldn't, uh, you know, I, I can't sing like this guy. All right. Here Gosh, who go. was that? Three, two, one. Who was it? Do, do you know who this was? Aaron's just Oh, playing. I do. Yeah, I was. Uh, was that a sorry impersonation of Frank Sinatra singing yes. the Barney song? Yes, it was Frank Sinatra. I'm so sorry if it was bad. You guys can make fun of me. You already called me the moose, man, so it's fine. I'm over it. Uh, Aaron, you got the next one, and I see you've got a friend with you, your little guitar. Yeah, I brought my guitar. I don't know if it's going to help at all. I thought it would help me with this, but I, ah. All right, here we go. I'm just going to try whatever's coming to mind. What is this? Put it in the chat. Here we go. Oh, let's get down to business, to the feet, the hands. Did I send me ten daughters when I asked for sons? <laughs> Ha, 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 the sons. I am not gonna catch my breath. I'll say that and those who knew me. Oh, ha, ha, I'm never for the cutting gym. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Okay, I'm stopping there. I don't even know what that was. All right, five, four, three, two, one. Wow, that was the best impression of the Bee Gees. Yes, that is right. Yes. Uh, the song from Mulan, I believe. Yeah. What is I'll it? I'll make a man out of you. Yeah. Yes. Gosh, well done. Good. Very good. All right. Name the song and the person I am impersonating. Here we go. Um, man, I gotta think about how to just. I gotta get the pipes ready. They're always ready. You, your pipes are they're golden. Hey, what did the uh, what did the plumber say? to the singer uh you've got golden pipes i was gonna say nice pipes but uh all right forget it all right so here we go um okay so ready up in horsey heaven here's the thing oh my gosh you trade your legs for angels wings I know exactly what this is. And once we all say goodbye, you take a running leap and you learn to fly. Um, <clears throat> bye, bye, little Sebastian. All right, that's enough. That was it. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, I did not say the name of the title, so don't don't think I gave it away. Here we go. Who was the impression? What was the that was song? incredible? That was incredible, Josh. Uh, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Aaron, what was it? That was Kermit the Frog singing uh, 500 Candles in the Wind" 
from Parks and Rec. Yeah, 5,000 Candles in the Wind. Wonderful song, a classic. Uh, just hopefully, you didn't get that if you don't know Parks and Rec, but hopefully you've got it. The, the, in memory of uh, the late, great Lil Sebastian, uh, the world's greatest uh, tiny horse that's ever been. All right, uh, great job. Hopefully you're doing well in there. Let's get back to Aaron. What is the next one I sent you? This you know is, what? I, this is a this is a very big switch for me. Uh, genres are going all over the place. Are are you ready for this? I am more than ready. All right, here we go, guys. Get ready. Yeah, Rosenberg's H bomb, Sugar Ray, Bourbon Job, Brando, the King and I, and the Catcher in the Rye. Eisenhower, vaccine, England's got a new queen, yeah. Macchiato, Liberace, Centinetta, goodbye. Ooh, we didn't start the fire. It was always burning since the world's been turning. Okay. Oh. oh, that was so bad. Okay, well, good luck with that one. Okay, fine. I don't know. That was a really, really good one. Um, was all these things? <laughs> all right, I'm, I think we're gonna call it. So five, four, three, two, one. Um, the answer, I don't know. Honestly, the impression, I, I can think of like four different people. Um, I, <laughs> I, uh, I, I got the song, which is We Didn't Start the Fire. Correct. Right, by uh, William Joel, the great William Joel. Um, but, but who was that impression? You tell me. It was uh, the great king of the queen of uh, pop. Queen of it, it was uh, Jay Z. Oh yeah! Oh nailed it! Really quick. I think we're running out of time here. Um, so I'm gonna go with. I don't know. This is gonna be the worst thing ever. Uh, but you know what? We're doing it. We do it. Anything for the game anything for the for the children for the kids for all the, the kids this is all this is about we're for the all children quarantine what else do we got we gotta do our impressions okay so <clears throat> okay last one from me let me just i just gotta i gotta tune hold on it's not tuning uh, isn't that i don't know what the, yes all right all right here we go Okay. I raise a hallelujah. What? <laughs> In the presence of enemies. I raise a hallelujah. Oh, it's not working. Oh, that was nailed. <laughs> Keep going. What in the world? I raise a prayer. Not my hallelujah, don't lie. I don't know. I know the song. It's so clear the song. I have no idea. It was so bad. We gotta call that one. It was so bad. Um, obviously, Aaron, you seem to be having a hard time placing my great impression of one Shakira. Yes. <laughs> That was definitely Shakira. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was uh, Grover. <laughs> um, Super Grover! Oh my gosh. I think we that would have been that. good. That would have been a better one. All right, so uh, let's give points to anybody in the chat who also said Grover. Okay. Uh, we're yeah, there you go. So if you said Shakira, you're a genius and you've probably stolen the answers. If you said Grover, that'll count too. What was the song though? Oh, this, uh, the song was Raise a Hallelujah. Raise a Hallelujah. I basically said it like four times. Uh, so that was good. All right. Let's end this game with the best impression ever in the history of the world. I know it's coming. I know it's coming, McGinnis. This Let's is do not this. Please. A good impression. Nor is this even a singer. <laughs> so, um, so here goes nothing, guys. Try to figure it out. I'll try to add context clues because there's no other way. All right, here we go. Ready? Uh, you call me out upon the waters, and if you get a, a nice stroke in, you can make some happy little waves, happy little waves. And there's the foam. Uh, the great unknown where 
my feet uh, may fail, but my brush never does. My brush. It's, uh, and you guys at home, uh, you're, you're going along and we're just having fun here. There's no such thing as uh, mistakes, just happy mistakes, happy accidents. <laughs> In oceans deep, here's the oceans. Uh, here's some uh, a little a little texture here, uh, and in the my faith will stand. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so that's uh, <laughs> that's all I got. I'm not gonna keep going. Okay, <laughs> I, I think, stop. I think you've done enough for us to definitely get this one. I, if you don't get this one. You're living as James Wheeler so, or no, as Daniel Wart so eloquently said, uh, you're living under a rock. You're living under a rock. Which, uh, you don't know Daniel Wart and you don't know this. All the way over. Anyway, yeah, you're out. No, that's a different rock. <laughs> okay. But anyway, listen, the answer, here's what I think it is. I think the song is Ocean. Yes. Right? And the artist is an actual artist. Oh. It's an actor, Bob Ross. Yeah, it's, it's Bob Ross. Bob Ross. <laughs> All right, there it is. All right, guys. Well, that was awesome. We're gonna check the um, we're gonna check the the chat. See how many of you got any of those right. If you got any of them right, you've actually you should get a medal and like a steak dinner because that was incredible. Um, but guys, thank you so much. We'll see you next week, Aaron. Uh, I'm I'm gonna say back to you. You just well, have to I'm gonna I'm gonna go back. We're gonna go back to the main camera. Yeah. Josh, that was a phenomenal treat. What a time to be alive. What a time to be alive. I hope you were able to get your snack in uh, that you normally have during game. <laughs> you <laughs> wow. You know, eight inch hoagie, as the kids say. Ho hoagie is it a sub submarines? Oh, forget. They they right, do. We're they wasting do. time. Aaron, back to you. All right. All right. Let's switch over here with this nice little graphic as I scoot over. <laughs> All right. Speaking of beautiful singing and golden pipes, we'll say, um, we're actually going to transition into worship, musical worship tonight. Um, and uh, to do so, I'm actually going to pray for us. So if you will bow your heads, um, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this time to get together, albeit digitally, um, but to worship together, to know that we are in our houses singing together, uh, glorifying your name, praising you for who you are. You are good. You're a good father, Lord. You're uh, wonderful. You're gracious, kind. Your forgiveness is uh, more than we could ever ask for. I pray that we um, take all the gifts that you've given us and just glorify you with them, including our voices tonight. So, um, God, let us uh, prepare our hearts um, to know that you are on the throne and you deserve worship. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My way. I'll raise a hallelujah Heaven comes to fight for me I'm gonna sing In the middle of the storm Louder and louder You're gonna hear my praises roar Up from the ashes Hope will
Can't go back to the beginning Can't control what tomorrow will bring But I know here in the middle Is the place where you promised to be
Well, awesome, guys. We have a awesome opportunity this week to start a new series. Last week, we heard an amazing testimony from Anna Couch. And this week, we're going to start a series called What to Do When You Don't Know What to Do. Uh, you can imagine there's a lot of times in our lives where we, we're put in a situation and we're like, yeah, I, I don't know what the right choice is. I don't know actually what I should do next. Um, and we're actually going to go through the book of not the book of Genesis. Uh, we're going through the story of Joseph in Genesis. Joseph, the guy with the really nice coat of many colors. Um, and we're going to see how his story can actually help us with our story. And especially um, today, we're going to be talking about family. Um, because if you know, Joseph had a pretty crazy family. I'll get into that. Um, w one thing about family that I wanted to talk about today is how when we're at home, 
do you ever feel like you act differently than when you're with your friends? When you're at home, do you ever feel like you are more angry, more annoyed, more frustrated than you are when you're uh, with your friends, when you're at school talking with teachers? I don't know. I know me personally, when I was at school or at a friend's house, man, the, their parents or the teachers would be like, oh, Aaron is a golden child. He does everything. He's, he's so sweet. You know, he's, he's a good kid. He, he likes other people. And that was me at school and around my friends. But at home, sometimes it was a different story. I got very annoyed. I was chippy with my brothers. I would give my parents the silent treatment all the time. Slam my door, right? That stuff happened at home. It didn't so much happen at school. And we're all in different places. But sometimes we all have a tendency to be not just the realest, but the worst version of ourselves when we're at home. I find this super strange. Why does that happen? I'll give you a quick story. Um, so at school, I was the kid who never went to the principal's office. I was that annoying kid, right? But at home, uh, there was a whole nother story going on. I can remember specifically one story, uh, and it goes like this. My brother and I went to a basketball camp uh, over the weekend. We thought we were really cool, going to be the next LeBron James, Michael Jordan, or Gary Payton. I don't know. Uh, but we were at this basketball camp, and at the end of the basketball camp, they awarded one player a uh, most valuable, valuable player trophy. And it was just for like a two-day basketball camp. And my brother got the trophy. And they come out with it, and they almost need two people because it is this massive, gigantic, like, it was probably a four-foot trophy. And he grabbed that thing and grinned so much. And I uh, was over there. And do you think I was just cheering him on and like so happy for him? No, I was the annoying younger brother. I was mad and I was jealous uh, at him. So when he got home uh, and he put the trophy in his room, I decided to take the trophy out of the room, place it in the hallway, and I started chucking baseballs down the hallway at the trophy. And my brother's sitting there reading like a, a magazine, like ESPN or something. And he looks up at me, looks back down, and I keep doing it. And he goes, something's up. So he's reading his magazine. He looks up to me, he goes, what are you doing? Uh, and this is when I took the camera out and I rolled one last baseball down. And he runs over and looks down the hallway and sees that I'm chucking baseballs at his brand new gigantic MVP trophy. And he flips a switch and gets super angry. And so what do I do? As the kind, loving brother, I take out a video camera, ding, grab his reaction as he's chasing, what are you doing chasing me through the hallways? What I'm trying to illustrate is this. When I was at home, I was a real annoying person sometimes. Um, and, and when we think about ourselves, you, me, when we think about ourselves, why is it that when we're at home, sometimes the worst version of ourselves comes out? Well, uh, oftentimes when we're at home, we think it's my space, my building, my room. And then we start looking very selfishly at ourselves and we ask ourselves, this deadly question when something happens. We ask ourselves this, how does this affect me? How does this affect me? When my brother won this wonderful trophy, did I think, wow, how great for him? That's awesome, great job, brother. No, I thought, how does this affect me? It made me look less than him. It made me uh, look like I didn't accomplish as much, right? It made me look bad from my perspective. So what did I do? I turned around and I annoyed him. I tried to bring him down a level, right? I, I was not a fun brother for at least a week to two weeks after that. Um, but that was not the right reaction I should have had. But I did have it because I was asking myself this question. How does this affect me? <laughs> and you might be thinking, oh, I don't ask that question. But has, has your parent ever asked you to watch your younger sister or brother when they go out to get groceries? And you think, wait, what? I have to watch my <laughs> younger sibling? That means I can't play the video games I wanted to play. I can't go outside because I have to watch them. Uh, I can't be on a chat with my friends because I have to watch them. 
So when your parents get home, you give them the silent treatment. Come on, parents, right? It's because we're asking ourselves this deadly question, how does this affect me? It's a very selfish, inward question. But when we act this way, when we get angry, jealous, frustrated, from uh, because we're asking ourselves, how does this affect me? It changes the whole vibe in our house. So you might be sitting in this tension at your house and thinking, well, what do I do then? What do you do when things are tough at home, when the mood is off, when you know you're part of the reason things are tense, but you have no idea what to do about it? So you guys sitting there at home, you might just love your family. You're like, yes, quarantine. I get to spend every waking minute and second with my whole family. This is the best. Um, but you also might be in the boat where family's tough and being all confined together is a tough time. Or maybe some of your family is over here and some is over here and quarantine has made that even harder. Well, I want to let you know you're not alone. One of my favorite things about the Bible is it's not just stories of like heavenly beings, right? But there's actually stories of real down-to-earth families um, and families that are going through stuff, right? And we can learn a ton about our own lives and about God's character through these real-life stories that actually happened. So uh, we're going to go to the story of Joseph today to figure out what to do when we don't know what to do, right? Now, Joseph, the story of Joseph is crazy. If it were a movie, it would be a bestseller. I think, well, I mean, Joseph in the Technicolor Dreamcoat was a bestseller and it was a great movie. So uh, case in point. Uh, but the story of Joseph is a wild one. I'll just give you some context. It starts with Joseph's father, Jacob. So Jacob uh, was a guy who who loved a girl named Rachel, but he was tricked into marrying a girl named Leah. So already some tension. Um, and then after working off some, <laughs> working it off and coming to an agreement, he was then able to finally marry uh, Rachel, which, uh, so if you're following along, he now has two wives. Okay. And as they go on, Jacob and Rachel and uh, Leah, they have a lot of kids. But the thing is, Rachel, the one that Jacob really loved, was not able to have children. She was barren. So Leah's having all these children. Oh, and two other wives get added to the story. So, so finally, after 11 children, Rachel, the one who hasn't been able to have children, has a child. That child's name is Joseph. So <laughs> here we go. Jacob loved Rachel the most. Rachel has the last child named Joseph. So naturally, Jacob loves Joseph more than all the other brothers. So whew, if you're following along to this family drama, there's Jacob, there's four wives, and there's 12 sons, one of which Jacob loves more than all the rest, which is already a problem. That's not good. And when you see polygamy in the Bible, you know something not great is going to happen. So the story of Joseph uh, is a story that involves him going to jail, him being sold into slavery, him ruling a nation, him interpreting dream. It, it goes all over the place, which makes it a great story. But we're going to focus on the family tension here, right? So Joseph is the favorite of 12 sons, four mothers, one father. <laughs> what? Um, and this is what happens. Uh, J Jacob gives Joseph, the youngest son, this beautiful coat. And he makes it known to the whole family and all the brothers that Joseph is my favorite one. Like, hey, you brothers who are older, uh, I don't like you as much as this younger kid. How would that make you feel? On top of that, this is what happens. Uh, Joseph has some dreams. The first dream, there's some uh, there's shoots of uh, wheat that come up, and an, another shoot goes even higher and higher, and all the other ones bow down to the one shoot of wheat, I believe. And Joseph says this to all his brothers, hey, I had this dream, and you guys are the, the wheat that bows down to me. I am younger than you, but I, you guys are going to bow down to me. And then they're, they are already were mad. They add anger 
Then he has another dream to add on to it. And he says this, hey, guys, I had another dream. They're like, great, great. What was it? He's like, I had a dream that even the sun and the moon and the stars all bowed down to me. So like everything in creation was bowing down to me. And these brothers are like, you've got to be joking me, right? Like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. They actually say this in Genesis 37, 8. His brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he said. If you have your Bible out uh, uh, to Genesis 37, 8, I want you to circle hated. And they hated him all the more because of this dream. How did they get to a place where they hated Joseph? Well, it's not hard, but they were asking the same question as earlier. They're asking this question. How does this affect me? And although they have some ground to stand on, this question, how does this affect me, is going to bring about hatred, anger. It's a question Jesus never asked. Think about that. We are hyper aware of how we are being treated and not really aware of how it affects anybody else. Let me read that one more time. We are hyper aware of how we are being treated and not really aware of how it affects anybody else. So everyone in this story is thinking about themselves. Joseph is just thinking about himself. I'll tell everyone I'm the greatest. The brothers are only thinking about themselves. What does this mean for us? He's, uh, we're jealous. My father loves him the most. Ah, we got to retaliate, right? The father Lo and behold, he doesn't even mind the other sons. He just shows favoritism and lets them all know that he likes them less. So the father is not doing any good either. Everyone in the story is thinking about themselves. So why are we reading this story today? Well, one is to show us that family has always been complicated. Two, to teach us to pay attention to how our actions and even our situations affect the people we live in. We affect the people we live with. Three, to remind us that tension not dealt with will never just go away. It will always escalate to something bigger. <laughs> it says here next week, we'll see how Joseph's situation is escalated to a dumpster fire. Let's just say this tension that no one addresses and that just keeps brewing because everyone's selfish does not end well. <laughs> it does not end well. And you'll have to tune in next week to see how, where it even goes from here. So what could everyone in the family have done differently? Joseph could have started to see himself as part of the problem as one person in a large family and not the center of it. That's the same with us. We often think it's the family's problem, but honestly, we're a part of it too. We got to kind of see it as our problem as well. Number two, the dad could have recognized how his favoritism was impacting his family. Yeah, dad. Uh, three, the brothers could have helped, uh, could have chilled out a little bit on the grudges and gossip about Joseph. And four, everyone could have ignored Joseph's dreams and not allowed their insecurity to control them. Um, guys, what is happening here? Everyone is thinking about themselves. Everyone is asking the question, how does this affect me? Um, when what they should have been doing is valuing others above themselves. When we are in our family and we think we're the best, we're better than everyone else, we start thinking of how does this affect me? I deserve better. I deserve to have what I want. How could you do that to me, right? That's the attitude. Well, that attitude brings along hatred, jealousy. It's not good. So how do we cure this? What do we do? How do we improve our situation or even act better? Is that even possible? Well, let's go to one of my favorite verses in the Bible, which talks about this. It's Philippians 2, 3 through 8, and it says this, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a human servant, being made in human likeness, 
and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Guys, Jesus was God. He deserved more than any of us. He was better and more valuable than, than anyone, but he did not use that uh, status to ask the question, how does this affect me? No, Jesus humbled himself. And instead of asking, how does this affect me? How does dying on the cross affect me? He asked the question, how do I love others? How does what I do love others? What is most loving for others? And that's the same mindset that we have to have. We have to have the same mindset as Christ Jesus if we want to have any hope at at things being healed within our own family. Imagine for a second if everyone in your family did this. What if everyone paid attention to how they affect everyone else instead of the opposite? What would it do for your relationship with the people who live at your house? What would it do for the general level of tension or peace at your house? And what if it started with you? Family is tough. I know that. Um, But we can do our part in acting more and more like Jesus, humbling ourselves and trying to love others the best. So look at yourself. What can you change? How can you react more like Jesus in your family? All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, uh, This is not an easy message. We're coming from very different families. Uh, Some of us, uh, you know, are in a great position with our families. Some of us are in a tough position with our families. Um, But no matter who we are, um, we often have a tendency to be selfish and ask ourselves, you know, how does what they're doing affect me? And we often use that as an excuse to get angry, to annoy others, to to badmouth others, gossip. God, that is wrong and we've read um, that it is, but we need help uh, to execute, to, to live like your son, Jesus. Uh, it's not easy to humble ourselves. So uh, please give us a heart that values others above ourselves because it's not natural. Uh, give us a heart that wants to love others and doesn't just want the best thing for ourselves, Lord. And help us, uh, help anyone who's watching with their families today. Um, please begin healing in those lives. We really pray. Amen. Well, awesome, guys. That's it for tonight. Uh, if you want to memorize Philippians 2, uh, I believe it's 4, uh, that is a wonderful verse to memorize. Me and my wife did it for our wedding. But um, a quick announcement. Remember, tomorrow is the drive through the drive-by at Browncroft from 3 to 5. So if you and your family want to Rev up that engine and drive through. We can say hi in person to you guys. That's tomorrow. Um, I'm going to send it over to Ben and Alyssa, one of my favoritest couples, uh, to send it off to small group. Thanks, guys. All right. Hey, I'm Ben. And I'm Melissa. And we are your 11th grade small group leaders at Browncroft. We miss you guys so much. So very much. Quarantine is driving us crazy. Yeah, I've been reading a lot about birds. And I've been drinking a lot of coffee creamer. Yeah, so Alyssa, what's your favorite thing about small group? My favorite thing about small group is getting to see my girls' beautiful faces every week and talk to them about Jesus. That sounds pretty cool. What about yours? What's your favorite thing about small group? Well, my favorite thing about small group is just hanging out with my guys and getting really deep and learning about Jesus together. Actually, we've been doing a Bible study. That's awesome. Yeah. So how can you join a small group? Well, I mean, you got to look for a link from your leaders. And uh, I guess that's a wrap from us. So great to see you all. See ya.